you will not have no other lesson. I am the last one. Behind me come God himself. Assalamu alaikum. Who is the God coming after the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? This question is often asked by people who may not have access to the lectures of the Messenger or by people who have been confused by hypocrites. In this video, we will answer the question by presenting the Messenger's words and analyzing the context. The scriptures prophesy the coming of Almighty God Allah, and the term coming describes movement. You need to have a physical form to move from one place to another. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad revealed to the world that Almighty God Allah is not a formless spirit or ghost, but is a living person. That is why God is called Lord, King or Son of Man and has human attributes like knowing, seeing, walking, hearing. The prophets and messengers of the past have not fully revealed his identity, but they gave us descriptions and hints. The last messenger of Almighty God Allah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is the first divinely sent messenger to reveal the true identity of Almighty God Allah. So, Brother Ahmed, who exactly is God according to the messenger? Well, according to the messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I have a quote here, Allah desires to make himself known to the world that he alone is God and has appeared among us in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad. Both Bible and Quran teach of the presence of God in person at the end of the world of Satan, the devil's rule. We would be foolish to disbelieve that such a character is not present and is not directing the course of nations today, end quote, the messenger Elijah Muhammad. Master Farad Muhammad is one and only God for the lost founds. Quote, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. There are the same words used by Master Farad Muhammad to whom praise are due forever. But having two meanings, number one, he is one and part of the black nation, which is first and last. Secondly, the words mean that I am the first God and savior and friends of yours and the last God, savior and friend to you, the lost, found, so-called Negroes, messenger Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir, that's right. And we know that Allah in person, the son of man, is here for a reason. Brother Daniel, what's the intention or purpose of God today? Yes, sir. Who shall judge us? The Son of Man. Well, who is the Son of Man? Master Farad Muhammad. As the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us when referring to Master Farad Muhammad, he used a quote from Jesus. It reads like this. As the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad explains, he says, Jesus did not leave us to look for a spirit, unnatural, not human, but to look to face a man who is the son of a man, and that this great man is not to be expected to come from another planet. According to the signs of his coming, he is of the earth. And that was from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He goes further and says this. He's so wise and powerful. He makes everything of the creation to bear him witness that this is the day of judgment. And then makes you and me 
bear witness. This is the day of judgment. And the church is sitting, able, wise, knows us, and writes down what we do and say, sit in church over the nation of the earth, having the power over their thoughts, making them to now fight each other, turning them insane. You see it going on? So that they cannot agree, breaking them up with confusion. Read your Bible, it's there, prophesied. He also says, speaking about Master Farah Muhammad, he also goes to say this in referring to Master Farah Muhammad. He says, he was born to destroy with unquenchless fire the enemy of we lost people that the work of Yaqub's made devil will never revive. He was born to unite the lost sheep who went astray in 1555 with the 4,400,000,000 of his nation. He was born to restore all black mankind into one love together. Born the Lord of the worlds. He even goes further and says this. We were found here in 1931 by Almighty God and the person of Master Farah Muhammad to whom praises do forever. The sole master of the day of judgment. He who shall judge. He who is worthy to judge. He who is wise in knowing the deeds of mankind. He who knows everything secret or open in the universe. The wise, the mighty, the doer of what he pleases. The most merciful and the most forgiving of sins of which this comes by him. Forgiving we who has followed this sinful man and have committed the same sin through ignorance of ourselves. The day of judgment. Indeed, and understanding the context of the messenger's words is crucial. For example, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad stated, quote, God has made himself known, for I teach not the coming of God, but the presence of God in person. End quote. And the messenger also stated, quote, There will be no other messenger. I am the last, and after me will come God himself. End quote. The first statement doesn't contradict the second statement because the messenger refers to the presence of God, the Son of Man in the world today. The prophets foretold his coming in the last days. They said the Son of Man will be born. And this has been fulfilled in 1877. Because in 1877, the Son of Man, God in person, Master Farad Muhammad, to whom all praises do forever, was born and he made himself known to his messenger in America, in the West, as stated by Brother Daniel. God in person, the Son of Man, was born and is here now. He is present in the world, and this is what the messenger refers to when he said, I teach the presence of God in person. When the messenger stated that after him God will come, he refers to the final end of this world. For the message in which I am delivering, that he has given to me, there is nothing left for Allah. The only thing that is necessary after this message is God himself to come and finally judge to me. He is referring to God in person, Master Farad Muhammad, the son of man, coming after him to judge the wicked. Is God himself to come and finally judge the wicked? The messenger teaches us that Master Farad Muhammad is the sole master of the day of judgment. He is the one who will judge. As we can see, the messenger is talking about Allah in person. Master Farad Muhammad coming after him. Brother Ahmed, um, the scriptures are teaching us the same, that Elijah is the last messenger before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Indeed, the messenger confirms biblical prophecy. Quote, the Bible, the last book in the Bible, teaches you that when Elijah comes, what Elijah says to you after him, God will appear. And God will appear in his holy temple, not in a church. Holy temple means mosque of Islam, end quote. Messenger Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. 
Well, we have God appearing as a thief and also coming in the clouds with great glory. The Bible teaches us. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Matthew 24, 30. The messenger goes on to teach us about that chapter. He says, here in the plainest words is the Son of Man in the judgment day. We are not told by either Moses or Jesus to look for God on the judgment day to be anything other than man. Spirits and spooks cannot be the judge of man's affairs. Man is material of the earth. How long will you be ignorant of the reality of God? He says, you are poisoned by the devil's touch. Why are you looking for a God that is not in flesh and blood as you are? That's a good question. Then he goes on to say, spirits can only be found in another being like yourself. What pleasure would you have in an invisible world? Mm, think about that, brothers and sisters. Then he says, and on the other hand, what pleasure would spirits have in this material universe of all? Your very nature is against your being anything other than a human being. End quote. Messenger Elijah Muhammad. He also teaches us this. It is the most high Allah, God in person, who is high above the clouds on a man-made planet from the earth. Its machinery cannot be equaled by the devil's scientist. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He was teaching us about that, that verse when God appeared on the cloud. Not saying that he's going to be surfing on a cloud. People are making reports on this ship that they seeing up there. Okay, let's go a little further. He says, first he comes like a thief, like a common man, to resurrect the dead and reform them through his messenger. And then later on, the, the final day, he returns with his angels to execute and take over. The messenger explains this in a TV interview. What uh, uh, happened to Barack Muhammad? Why did he disappear? Well, uh, that happened like this. After uh, he had given to me what he wanted to uh, give to me uh, as the teachings and the work of uh, uh, preparedness of our people, then it was not necessary for him to remain uh, here among us. So he taken his leave, as it is uh, said in Quran that the people is not worthy that God remain among, among them, but he makes a messenger of that people. That uh, through that messenger he uh, will reach the people through him. And the Bible is, is very by the same. And so he left, and that uh, he gave me hint about his return, but now uh, there is just as much prophesy that he will return, or he will not return, as the is uh, of his returning. Because uh, the Bible say he will send his angels uh, and they will take care of uh, the gathering of his people. I don't expect him to return in person, not like that, because uh, uh, there is too much uh, for us to look forward to that he will not. It is not really necessary if he's going to send his own uh, people, as they refer to angels, to gather the believers of my people, it's not necessary. Where did he go? Where is he now? Well, that is something that uh, we actually cannot say. If uh, one would uh, open up such truth as the truth of God uh, to the people, I do think that he's within his right to stay out of the sight of the people until he has uh, uh, won everything to himself, as the Bible referred for us to it like this. 
that uh, he's something like a king looking uh, for a kingdom. And that he go and he uh, visit uh, the people and then he leaves the people and goes away and wait until the time when that he can secure the kingdom. Then he returns to the people that uh, he had made himself a uh, manifest to. So I think that is a pretty good uh, answer. Here the messenger stated that he did not expect Master Farad Muhammad to return before the judgment day. He did not expect him to return to America and walking the streets like a common man or teaching the people or doing administration of, for temples. The messenger didn't expect him to return to do that. But the messenger said he will return to take over, ruling like a king universally. The devil is still here ruling those who are blind. But when Master Farad Muhammad returns, this will be over. He will crush the wicked. Yes, exactly. An early letter from the messenger bears witness and teaches that Master Farad Muhammad will return. And in this letter, the messenger wrote, Now this did he charge me with to go and make many ministers and send them in all of the cities and teach Islam as he hath given it to me, adding nothing to it, not even taking an atom from it, lest we dilute his holy word and be found guilty of falsifying the truth on his return. So this letter here is teaching us that the Savior will return. Well, the messenger makes it plain. He says, the God that comes after you, he will spend three years and a half in the midst of you. Then he says, and after a certain year, that one will return again. And when he returns, that will be the end of the world. Messenger, Elijah Muhammad, Savior's Day, 1958. The God that comes after you, he will spend three years and a half in the midst of you, unobserved by the enemy, and that he would reveal himself to whom he will of you, and whom he reveal himself to. He would disappear after that, and he would go away, and he would communicate with that one. And he, in turn, will communicate the communication of the God to you. And, uh, and after five years, that one will return again. And when he returns, that will be the end of the world. And he will gather all those that believed and followed that messenger of his that he revealed himself to. He won't return to teach you. No. But will come after that people that believe in the way that he communicated to his messenger. See, he teaches us that one, not another one, but that one. Yes, sir. And Brother Ahmed, I am sure some people may ask, how is it possible that he will return when he was born in 1877? Well, he's a scientist. I'm going to put it clear and illogical for people. This is not a spook. And uh, you're even the Bible at the prophets living hundreds of years, correct? So if you eat to live, if you if, uh, Master Farah Muhammad uh, gave the instructions to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad on how to eat to live. I have, and he has there, if you start a child out, a baby, on uh, a diet, a proper diet, even bean soup, or if you uh, start them out eating one meal a day or one meal every two days or one meal every three days, that will uh, lengthen the lifespan of a person because uh, you're not wearing out your stomach and you're not poisoning your body with food. Food can take you out or keep you here. The proper diet, the proper mental capacity and uh, the will to live Again, Master Farah Muhammad said there is no expiration date on the human on human life. We yes. take ourselves out by, by what we think, what we uh, drink, and what, what we eat, social environments. All of that plays a factor in uh, mortality. He's a scientist. So if he's going to teach people how to eat to live, don't you think he's mastered it himself? His name is Master, the title. 
is Master Farad Muhammad. And yes, he will live to be at least 400 years old. He's 82 years old today, and uh, he will live long, long time. He will be here 400 years. All the things that he used to do. <laughs> All right. So we have people today. Uh, and uh, I remember 35, 40 years ago, there were a group of people living in Afghanistan who were at least 148 years old at that time doing war times. These men live to be 148 <laughs> years old. Yes. Now these are, and they're in Afghanistan. But the messenger explains that if you have the right types of food, water, environment, you keep your mental capacity together. Keep your stress levels down. We have no expiration date on our lives. This Western society kills us with the air, water, and the food and the environment we live in. But there's no expiration date on the human life. And if the Christians believe their Bible like they say they, they do, this should not be uh, in amazement at a man being able to live uh, over 300 to 400 years old. Because even in, in the Bible, you have Methuselah living to meet almost 900, uh, over 900 years old. And we always kept time the same way. We've always had 365 year days. That's science. This mm -hmm. is the science on how to eat to live. Yes, he will be here. He's here. Uh, and if you don't think he's here, stick around a few more days. Yes, exactly. Brother Daniel, some people accuse the Muslims of being passive or they say we are just sitting back and waiting. They imply that our belief in his return means that we do nothing. What's your opinion regarding this charge? Yes, sir. The messenger himself didn't wait. He was working. All Muslim followers of the messenger are working. We don't sit back and wait. We do whatever we can to spread the truth and build a nation. So the messenger said this. He said, I say, brother, if judgment comes tomorrow, you've got to eat today. We have to do many things, Messenger Elijah Muhammad. Yes, no Muslim is sitting back. We work and we teach the truth. The Messenger and the Nation of Islam under his leadership plainly teach us that there is no God but Master Farad Muhammad. Quote, again, I must repeat, Messenger Muhammad is the last of the messengers. Therefore, no messenger is going to come after him. There is no God to come after the present God, Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever, end quote. And that's a quote from Sister Dorothy Wahid from Muhammad Speaks newspaper. Yes, there is no room for someone else, as we have shown and proven in this presentation. Thank you, Brother Minister Ahmed El Shabazz. It's truly a great honor, as always. No, the pleasure is all mine, brother. I always tell you, you're doing a great service and a great work. You're a fine Muslim, and Thank it's a you. pleasure. Thank you very much. All praises due to Allah. I also would like to give special thanks to you, Brother Daniel Ali Shabazz, for joining us and all the great work you are doing. I want to thank you, Brother Mustafa, I mean, for allowing me the opportunity to come on here and speak. It is a blessing and an honor for one to be among the believers believe strong as you and brother minister believe so i thank you and i pray Allah that i was able to serve a good purpose here today thank you very much again and may allah keep blessing you assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam sir wa alaikum salam